This video covers the introduction to the macronutrients and micronutrients section of the second chapter, the nutrition chapter of the Health Science 20 course. This is just going to be a very brief introduction. So when we're talking about the healthy eating patterns and when we're talking about ingesting these macro and micronutrients, we must consider a healthy and regular eating pattern. So we want to make sure that we get lots of vegetables and fruits, lots of protein, lots of whole grains, and making water our healthy choice. Now this image comes from the new Canadian Food Guide. We don't have that rainbow anymore. They updated it a few years ago. So this plate image here is from the new Canada Food Guide. And we see that about half of our intake is recommended to be vegetables and fruits. About a quarter is protein foods, and about a quarter is whole grain foods. And that's the basis for the Canadian Food Guide healthy eating patterns. So whole grains are things like quinoa, wild rice, whole grain pasta, vegetables and fruit, well that's apples, carrots, broccoli, etc. And protein foods are not just meat, we're talking about specifically lean meats, legumes, uh, beans, lentils, and lower fat yogurt, among others. There's lots of other different protein foods that we could ingest. Now, the important part here, what we're going to talk about a lot, at least the introduction of this chapter, is the macro and micronutrients. And each of these foods will contain macronutrients and micronutrients. A macronutrient, by definition, is a substance which is required in relatively large amounts by living organisms. So we need a lot of it. And we'll get into later in this chapter of how to calculate how much we might need based on our weight and height and etc. And that'll change depending on our own individual circumstances because whether you're uh, male or female, whether you're older or younger, whether you have lots of muscle mass and, or not, then that all differentiates in the amount that you require. A micronutrient is a chemical element or substance that is required in trace amounts or lower amounts. And this is for normal growth and development. So we don't need a lot of vitamin A or iron when we're comparing it to protein, for example. But we still do need some, and each of those chemicals, substances, elements, they all do something inside the human body. So nearly all foods have these. There's some things that don't, like candy. It's, only ca it's empty calories. There's no nutritional benefit from candy, unless it's packed with some other stuff that you might have uh, some raisins or something where you get something from the raisins. But most or nearly all foods will provide some amount of both macro and micronutrients. And so these images at the bottom here just show you the three macronutrients that we're going to discuss. Carbs, proteins, and fats. And we'll look at each of these individually. We'll look at carbs separately from proteins and separately from fats and what they do in the body and why they're important. And then on the right hand side, we see some of these micronutrients. So vitamin E, iron, sulfur, vitamin C, carotenoids, etc. Now those, there's so many of them that we won't talk about them individually, but we'll talk about minerals all together. We'll talk about vitamins together and we'll talk about some of the important ones and their roles. So this was just a quick introduction. What we'll do is continue on to the fats. That'll be the first macronutrient that we'll look at. Then we'll look at carbs. Then we'll look at fiber and proteins. And finally, enzymes. And that'll kind of all be in relation to the macronutrients, even though I don't know if enzymes are really considered a macronutrient. But they are very important within the body. 